So we're going to start module two, which is arithmetic of all the mathematical objects that were introduced to you in module one, like decimal numbers, complex numbers, polynomials, functions, rational expressions, and radicals. The first operation we're going to start with is addition. What do you think it means to add? Well, addition is a binary operation, which means that it acts on two objects with specific rules. The objects themselves are called add-ins or summons. You can add two or more objects if they have the same units. For example, two apples plus four apples will give me six apples. I can also go two apples plus four apples plus five apples. And so that would be six plus five, 11 apples. So apples is the unit in this case. We denote addition by this cross sign, or we call it the plus sign. So this is referred to as the addition symbol. I want you to now think about the following true and false questions and pause the video to answer them. Assuming you have paused and come back, the first answer would be false. And you might wonder why. That's because 5 inches plus 3 inches would be 8 inches. The inches is missing here. So when you add units, the resulting quantity also has the same unit. So 5 inches plus 3 cannot be added because they do not have the same unit. So number 2 would be false. Number 3 would be true because they're all inches. And 5 plus 3 plus 7 is 15. So we have 15 inches here. Number 4 is false. Even though 5 plus 3 plus 4 is 12, because 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 plus 4 is 12. But we cannot add them because these two quantities are in inches. And this one is in feet. So that is why we cannot add across. However, in number 5, it's true because we have converted 5 feet into 60 inches. And then we can add all of these together and get 67 inches. So number 5 is true. So this tells you how units play a very important role when we're adding. We cannot add unlike objects. So unless we find a way to convert a unit into another unit, you cannot add two dissimilar units. One very interesting fact you can find out is at this website. Find out for a video lock question the answer to the following question. What happened when people did not use like units? And you will see what happens at this website. OK, so now for a few minutes, I want you to pretend that you are the first ones to ever encounter addition. And you have to tell somebody how to add. So all the mathematical objects that you learned in uh, module one, I want you to think about how you would go about adding them. You, Some of you might already know how to add them. But if you don't know how to add some of these objects, just pretend that you are inventing a way to add them. So figure out a way to add these objects. We're giving you some examples, but you can pick your own examples. You don't have to have 3 plus 15. You can take two different counting or whole numbers, two different integers, and so on. Just figure out how you would go about adding these. So pause the video, finish, and then continue. So doing research in mathematics is exactly what you just did. You took objects from each of these, and you know how to do these additions, and then you extended that process to a different set of objects. And so mathematicians a lot of times take a problem that they know how to do and see if they can take that observation or that process and extend that process to other objects. And that's what doing research in mathematics is. So you might get a taste of what it feels like to develop your own set of rules that everybody else is going to follow. It's quite actually exciting to discover that something you uh, know how to do can be extended to other objects, and it actually is the same process, logical process. So now that you know that units play a key role in addition, let's take a look at some video log questions 
where you have to do the following. You're going to have four sets of objects. In each set, you are looking for uh, which items have the same units. So you're going to group items with same units in one group. And there may be several groups in a particular set. We're going to start you off here. So let, let's start with 2 over x. 2 over x can be thought of as two groups of 1 over x's. So look for all the ones that have 1 over x as the unit. So 2 over x is 1. 6x to the negative 1 it has the same unit as 2 over x because x to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over x. So these two uh, items are going to be long to the same group. All right, let's see. 2x to the negative 1, 12 over x, 1 over x. Can you see any others in here? Uh, let's see. How about that? And that. Right, so those are all the ones that have the same unit of 1 over x's. So you have 2 1 over x's, 6 1 over x's, 12 1 over x's, and so on. So the ones that we've highlighted green here form one group. Find all the other groups that are in here that belong together. And then once you're done with that, move on to the next set. So here's your second set. You can pause the video so that you have a chance to group the ones that belong together. And then here's your third set. Let's take a look at what does it mean really to add three apples plus four apples. And you all know how to do that. You know what the answer is going to be like, but really think about the process because Understanding this process with whole numbers is going to give you addition for all the other objects. So it's very important, even if you think it's elementary at the moment, like how boring, still spend a little time going through these motions. So we have three apples, and you want to add four more apples to it. So the actual process of adding is you start counting four up from three. So let's start counting. So you're three. So the first apple you add will give you four apples. Second apple add will give you five apples. Third apple added will give you six apples. Fourth apple added together will give you seven apples. And since we're adding four apples, we're done, and this is our answer then. So counting four up from three gave you seven apples. So your answer would be three apples plus four apples is seven apples. You can see how I needed the unit of apples, three apples. And four apples give you seven apples. Not seven, but seven apples. You have to have the units there. Otherwise, it may not make sense. Well, how about the reverse question? What if I change and I started with four apples and added three more apples? So that means you have four apples and you want to count three up from four. So first apple will give you five apples. Second apple added will give you six apples third apple added to give you seven apples. And so again, four apples plus three apples will give you seven apples total. So you can see what we've just done. We've reversed the order and we still got the same answer. So another way to see that would be, um, so let's start over. Another way to see that would be, so you have three apples and you added four apples. Well, you got the same number of apples if you simply reverse them, because the number of apples is still going to be seven apples. And so this process in mathematics is called the commutative property. And since the operation we're working with is addition, it would be commutative property of addition. So don't just say commutative property. When you're talking, you have to mention what operation you're working with. So the observation is that if you have two separate mathematical objects. Again, they must have the same units, otherwise we can't even add them. But if you can add them, and A and B are two mathematical objects that we have studied so far, then A plus B is the same or equal to B plus A. In A and B are referred to as summons. In other words, changing the order of two summons in a sum does not change the result. 
So terminology, again, remember, when you do oral exams, you have to use correct terminology. So the terminology we've introduced here is addition is commutative. Commutative property of addition means you can take two numbers added together and you can interchange their positions and still end up with the same result. Associative property. Associative property refers to when you're adding more than two objects. So suppose you have uh, three apples added together with two apples, and then you added uh, four more apples. So you're going to go three apples, and then four, five. So five apples, and then six, seven, eight, nine. So you're going to end up with nine apples. But what if you did the following? Instead of adding three apples and two apples together, you added two apples and four apples together. So you're going to have two apples and then three, four, five, six apples. So then you're going to get six apples here. But now you want to do three apples plus six apples. So that'll be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So again, you end up with nine apples. So associative property means if you have three mathematical objects we've studied so far, you can add first two together and then the third one, and it will be the, exactly the same as if you add the last two first and then add the first and the result. And so that is called the associative property. Look at how the brackets are moved. The parentheses move from first two to last two. So here's your uh, Video lock question. Think very carefully before you answer. Write it down before you turn it in. And really spend some time thinking about it. Use examples if you want. If I can combine commutative property of addition and associative property of addition, can you tell me if I'm adding four or five or six mathematical objects with the same units could I add any two together and then the rest of them? So, for example, if I have four objects, A, B, C, D, and I added them all together in order, or I can add A and D first, B and C, and then add the two results together to get an addition of all four of them. So spend a little time thinking about how you can add four objects if the order matters, or if I can add any two objects and then the remaining two, or any two objects, then the third one, and then the fourth one. So spend a little time thinking about it. I know it's abstract, but you can take concrete examples like take numbers 3, 2, 4, 5. How would you add them together? And does it matter the order? And what properties did you use to add these numbers? So. Remember, associative property of addition as changing the grouping of summons does not affect the result of the addition. So terminology, addition is associative means you are moving your parentheses from first two to last two and it does not affect the end result. Well, the next item to talk about is identity. So if you have four apples plus zero apples, or zero apples plus four apples because of community property, you still end up with four apples because you had nothing more to count. After four, I mean. So adding zero to any mathematical object we have studied so far does not change the value of this quantity. And that's why it's called identity. Identity means doing, uh, adding that object to another object does not change its value. So if A represents any mathematical object we've studied so far, then A plus 0 or 0 plus A both add up to A. In other words, adding 0 to a mathematical object leaves it unchanged. And by that I mean, I don't just mean any mathematical object, mathematical objects that we have studied in Module 1. The number zero is an additive identity. 